there. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and be able to share some of our work with you. Um, so today, before I start, I want to tell you a fact that I find actually humbling and amazing, even though I've been with it for quite some time here. So a full 25% of your daily calories goes just to replacing and maintaining your immune system. And of that 25%, half of that is believed to go to controlling the microbes that live in your gut. The first person to suggest that the gut microbiome was actually the famous cell biolog biologist, Eli Metchnikoff. Uh, no matter how clever we think we scientists are, there's always somebody who thought of the idea at first. And he was really fascinated with the aging process. And so what he would do is he would take autopsy samples of older animals or older people, and he would, he would look very carefully at the gut. Although he wasn't able to see gross changes in the structure of the gut, what he noticed is that the immune cells that lived in, underneath the gut, so those immune cells there, they had a phenotype, which he called intoxified. He knew from his studies of infection that when macrophages or other immune cells are in the process of a fulminant infection that's overwhelming, they will find, uh, they will become unable to phagocytose or to eat those bacteria. And they'll have this, what they, he called the angry phenotype. What, and what we now know means that they're producing a lot of inflammatory mediators. So because he can make these observations about what these macrophages look like, he hypothesized that the aged gut was becoming leaky and allowing either bacteria or bacterial products into touching these macrophages and causing them to produce this inflammation. But where the real brilliance of his observations were was that he also took slices of brains of the same humans or animals who died. And he found that these intoxified macrophages were also found in the brain. So he hypothesized that these bacterial products were making their way through that leaky gut and were getting into either the blood or the lymph and circulating throughout the body. In fact, he was the first person to propose that diseases of age, including what was then called senility, were caused by systemic inflammation. Now, Eli Metchnikoff was brilliant, but he was also ridiculed for some of his theories. And one of the things we tried to do in our lab was uh, prove or disprove this hypothesis. So the first thing we did is we aged what are called germ-free mice. So if you're not familiar with these mice, these are mice that grow up without any microbes on or in them. They're born by cesarean section, all their food is completely sterile, they're never allowed to, to encounter a microbe. And in some data that I'm not showing you here, we could show that these mice that had no microbiome had no systemic inflammation, and many measures of health were improved. That's not very practical, of course. So what we wanted to determine was whether the old microbiome had any of these microbes that were problematic and caused this inflammation or this intestinal permeability. So if you're not familiar with looking for these plots, this is basically just a summary of what the microbiome of a young or old mouse looks like. And you can see, if we look on the left here, you can see that there are some, like the purple bars here that might increase with age, some that might appear, some microbes that might appear with age that weren't there before. And sometimes there's also some reductions like this one at the top here. And so what we were able to do is we were able to house these germ-free mice, either young or old, with a normal mouse that was either young or old. And you can see that what would happen, irrespective of the age of the recipient mouse, is if they're housed with a young mouse, they pick up the young microbiome. And if they're housed with an old mouse, they pick up the old microbiome. So this allowed us to study the intersection between the age of the microbiome and the age of the host. And what we found was this. I've, li I've listed the link to the paper if you'd like to read all the details, but I'll give you the synopsis. The mice that picked up a young microbiome did not have this intestinal permeability, nor did they develop systemic inflammation, irrespective if the mouse itself was young or old. On the other hand, any of the mice that lived with the mouse that had an old microbiome did in fact become, have uh, systemic inflammation and intestinal permeability, indicating that it was the composition of the microbiome that led to these two factors. And current work, ongoing work in the lab, is identifying which species are problematic in this context. So essentially, the take-home message here is that you need to take care of your microbiome because it might be the key to the long and healthy life. We've already heard about how systemic inflammation can contribute to basically every ill effect of aging. And so here uh, is the model that we're building. All of us have slightly permeable guts. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to get our foods and nutrients from them. This does allow for the translocation of bacterial products. And once these products are in the circulation, we have systemic inflammation. 
In youth, we can probably clear these products fairly quickly. However, the systemic inflammation affects the very immune cells that are required to keep that gut microbiome under control. And so over time, the systemic inflammation contributes to microbial dysbiosis, which then also leads to this increased permeability. And so the cycle carries on. And the reason I like these data so much is that it really explains a lot of the epidemiology of what we know it takes to live a long and healthy life.